So Microsoft have something called Microsoft Fluid Components. And in today's video, I wanted to overview how they work and what it means for the future of Microsoft. Before we begin today's video, this video isn't sponsored by Skillshare, but we have some great productivity courses available over there, and they have a whole range of other courses too. If you wanna get 30 day free trial, it's in the link in the description. It'd be great to have you over there. So Microsoft is obviously putting a lot of time and attention into trying to leapfrog the market, allowing them to become the place for productivity in the future especially in the hybrid work environment, which basically means people working in the office and people working at home simultaneously. Now, Fluid Components are Microsoft's next big attempt to try and get in control of the wiki market, with applications like Notion and Coda rising, with abilities in there like sync blocks, interactive databases, and better ways to build tools, Microsoft are finding it hard to try and get in touch with that market. So Microsoft's solution is Fluid. Fluid components are basically live documents that you can access through any of the apps you're currently using. So very similar to how the real-time interactions work in a Google document, this will be previewable through existing Microsoft experiences. So for example, you can open up a live document inside of Teams without even leaving the chat window. You could open up a live document in an Outlook board and be able to continue accessing it. These are designed to be easy to open and easy to interact with. Now, Fluid has been around for a little bit of time now. It was actually first teased in the 2019 event that they had, and it's been growing in popularity since, with teams beginning to implement it. And more recently in their hybrid work update, they actually announced that this will become a feature inside of Microsoft. Now, in terms of the ability you can create a fluid document from any of the elements that you create in a piece of Microsoft Work. So for example, you create something in OneNote or inside of a spreadsheet or in another element, you can bring that along with you and allow other people to interact with it in real time. This is perfect for, for example, creating a spreadsheet or a tiny table that's inside of a document and still being able to interact with it without having to open it up every single time. Now, Microsoft have demonstrated this not only with things like spreadsheets and tables, but things like meetings and meeting agendas that inside of Microsoft Teams meetings on video and audio, you can interact with, allowing other people to take notes and begin to interact with them in real time. It's really also quite cool when it comes to the Outlook ability as well. So for example, when you're in Outlook boards, you can pin a live component, which allows you to start interacting with it and see other people interacting with it in real time. Now, it's really interesting to see this new addition because it really does take on the likes of Notion and Coda in building this better, sweet environment, allowing you and your team members to interact with it in a much more fluid fashion. Now, it's really interesting because Google haven't quite captured this yet, but this should have been Google's move because Google really took control of the market with Google Docs and Google Sheets and Google Presentations as well in allowing people to interact in real time. However, they really stunted their growth when they didn't innovate with something like this. Microsoft was very stagnant and static, but Fluid has really opened up the market for them to be the new leaders in the space. Now, although these features are more recently available in apps like Notion with sync blocks and obviously databases that already update with filters and things like that, this new ability inside of Microsoft platforms can definitely help teams stay with the Microsoft network more. They don't necessarily have to move out and it makes a lot more sense when it comes to collaborating with others as well. So what does the future hold for the Fluid platform? Now, as a technology, it's very smart and very intuitive. Being able to do stuff with less friction, being able to open up a separate link or open up a separate tab, it is a small thing, but it definitely changes the way that you work. Now, Microsoft obviously haven't quite hit the nail on the head with the wiki experience, but they may have potentially leapfrogged the market with this in allowing people to interact with certain elements. This could not only be useful in a team context, but in a personal context too. Being able to bring out sections and elements 
that are particularly useful to start editing versus actually interacting with the whole document. So the future looks bright. Google are gonna have to react to this. Folks like Notion and Coda are still gonna remain pretty useful, but I definitely see this market becoming very volatile in the future in competitors and access. So folks, that was an overview of how Microsoft Fluid Components work. It'd be great to have your opinion on how you think the market's gonna move. I'd love to hear them in the comments below. Anyway, folks, make sure to check out that Skillshare link with our productivity classes, but it's been great to overview what Microsoft Fluid Documents are. And I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.